findet in Englisch statt und ich gebe jetzt ab an Samira Gruber. Welcome to the Hannover Messe Digital Edition 2021. My name is Samira Gruber. I'm a researcher at Fraunhofer IWS in Dresden. And I would like to talk about additively manufactured aerospike nozzles today. Aerospike engines represent the following advantages compared to conventional engines. A mass saving of 30%, thrust vector control by means of secondary injection, and the reduction of engine weight, enabling a higher payload. These advantages result from the design-related automatic altitude adaptation of the thrust jet and the compact design of the engines. The challenge, however, is the manufacturing of these engines, in particular the cooling of the spike. It cannot be implemented using conventional manufacturing processes. The additive manufacturing laser powder bed fusion enables the production of complex three-dimensional structures with internal cooling channels. With this technology, Fraunhofer IWS, together with the Technical University in Dresden, started work on the development and fabrication of aerospike engines in 2018 and completed the first test engine in summer of 2019. By using a design suitable for additive manufacturing, the number of components could be reduced to only two parts. This results in a reduction of subsequent joining steps and an enormous shortening of the process chain. In the picture below, you see two components. The first one is the combustion chamber with near contour cooling, and the second component is the cooled spike with integrated injector head. Temperatures exceeding 2400 Kelvin exist in the combustion chamber during use. These temperatures are well above the melting points of most metals. This results in the need for active cooling of the engine. The test engine has two circuits which serve to cool the spike and the combustion chamber. Water is used as the cooling medium for the developed prototype. The cooling ensures that the wall temperature of the components is not exceeding 900 Kelvin. In the long term, instead of water, fuel is to flow through the channels before it is injected. This concept is called regenerative cooling and contributes to mass savings and increased efficiency. To withstand the loads during combustion, materials are needed that are both high temperature resistant and resistant to oxidation and corrosion. Inconel 718 is an excellent material for this purpose. Compared to most iron or nickel-based alloys, this material has excellent strength at high temperatures. Furthermore, Inconel 718 can be easily welded and is therefore a predestined material for processing by laser powder bed fusion. Extensive studies on the processing of this material have been carried out at the Fraunhofer IWS and process parameters have been optimized. Now, let's have an interactive look at the engine. The functional principle is based on the combustion of a mixture of liquid, oxygen and ethanol. The two fuel components are injected into the combustion chamber via the injector head and finally atomized. An electric ignition mechanism ignites the combustion reaction in the combustion chamber. The gas expands, is accelerated along the spike to the speed of sound, exits the combustion chamber through the annular gap and gives the engine its thrust. The additive manufacturing process laser powder bed fusion is based on the layer by layer selective melting of ultra fine metal powders. In this way, complex three dimensional solid bodies can be manufactured. The main parameters influencing the process and the material properties produced are the laser power, the traversing speed of the laser and the thickness of the powder layer applied. By optimizing these parameters, relative densities above 99.5% can be achieved. This engine production was carried out on the AM400 system from the manufacturer Renishaw. Using a parameter configuration optimized by Fraunhofer IWS, the combustor and injector head were manufactured within one build process. The manufacturing time is 48 hours. Due to the layer-by-layer -layer volume structure and the adhesion of powder particles to the component surface, the surface roughness of components manufactured using laser powder bed fusion are generally between 15 to 25 micrometers. For finishing, the process flow grinding, shot blasting and turning and milling is used. 
for machine post-processing, allowances must already be considered before additive manufacturing in order to set the final surface quality and compensate for distortion. Laser beam welding is another core competence at Fraunhofer IWS. Using a laser as an energy source, metallic components can be joined quickly and with low distortion. Only a single weld seam is required to manufacture the engine. This seam connects the injector head and the combustion chamber. In the welding of pressure vessels, the IWS has built up broad know-how over many years. After manufacturing, it is necessary to check whether the component meets the requirements. By means of computer tomography, the component is inspected with regard to dimensional accuracy, porosity, cracks, weld seam quality and powder residues in cavities. With accelerating voltages of over 200 kV, an image resolution of over 25 micrometers can be achieved for Inconel 718 at the Fraunhofer IWS. A reproducible manufacturing process can only be achieved if the quality of the starting material is correct. Each powder used at the Fraunhofer IWS is analyzed with respect to morphology, chemical composition, flow behavior and porosity. The engine was tested in August 2019 at the test stand site of the Chair of Space Systems at the Technical University of Dresden. By means of high-speed imaging of the engine test, combustion can be analyzed in detail. The knowledge gained can be used to derive improvements for the further development of the engine. The infrared radiation emitted by the exhaust gas stream and the engine can be used to measure the temperature without contact. This makes it possible to detect hotspots, which may indicate inadequate engine cooling. The test engine is based on a technology demonstrator which was developed in cooperation between Fraunhofer IWS and the Technical University of Dresden. This was used to demonstrate the potential of additive manufacturing in the field of aerospike engines. The market with small satellites will boom in the coming years. The Federation of German Industries believes that a European spaceport would make sense. From there, small to medium-sized launchers will carry research instruments and small satellites into orbit. These micro-launchers are designed for a payload of up to 350 kilograms, and an efficient way of propelling these micro-launchers is with the so-called aerospike engines. These offer the prospect not only of a considerable mass reduction, but also a significant fuel saving. My name is Lukas Stepin. I'm the group manager of the group Powder Bed Technologies and Printing at the Fraunhofer IWS. And um, the Aerospike project is very special for us because um, here in close collaboration with the Technical University of Dresden, the Institute of Aerospace Engineering, we've had the opportunity to work on the development and the production of uh, this type of engine from the very beginning. So in 2016, we started with this uh, co collaboration and put our first thoughts and planning into it. And by 2018, we've had a we had a geometry demonstrator, uh, which in, in which we proved and checked the overall feasibility of this kind of um, engine. Uh, by 2019, we've had a functional demonstrator, which was used for functional testing in the facilities at Freital, which also included hot gas uh, tests. And currently, we are working on the further iteration steps uh, of the functional demonstrator, which includes the enlargement of the combustion chamber volume. So, also further functional tests in cooperation with the Institute of Aviation in Warsaw, Poland, are planned for the next half of this year. Um, these projects in the context of aerospace and aviation are very important for us, since additive manufacturing must be approached from many different angles here, uh, which is also always a demand by the European Space Agency. And this includes, for instance, the quality assurance along the whole manufacturing chain which is the powder characterization, the powder management, but also a reliable powder pr procurement. Um, goes over to metallographic analysis, mechanical testing, non-destructive testing, um, like computer tomography or 3D scanning to detect remaining powder or defects. So this total package, the complete process chain, which we can offer, is certainly special in the additive manufacturing community. And um, for this purpose, the group of powder bed technology and printing at the Fraunhofer IWS has a team of process developers, powder experts and material scientists at your disposal. 
through those uh, European Space Agency projects, we've gained a lot of experience uh, and the high quality standards of the aerospace community are also transferred to other industrial projects uh, like the automotive, mechanical engineering or the medicine sector. Furthermore, we have several additive manufacturing processes which we can choose from. And these processes are the laser powder bed fusion, the binder jetting, electron beam melting, metal and polymer fused filament fabrication and stereolithography. Furthermore, we also have nozzle-based technologies in our department, such as the laser metal deposition with wire and powder. This wide range of technologies enables us to offer the most suitable process for the customer or the application. The saying, if you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, definitely does not apply to us. The Aerospike has a very interesting history in so far as it's been invented uh, basically 50 years ago. Um, when engineers were designing a new propulsion system with a very high energy density, they came up with this Aerospike design. One of the hurdles, though, they had to overcome was the extremely challenging manufacturability of the part because it's a highly complex, highly sophisticated part with uh, internal cooling channels, uh, cooling structures, which are extremely challenging to manufacture by conventional methods. So 50 years ago, people were not able to, to build these parts. But now with additive manufacturing, with a great world of um, more freedom in design, uh, designing parts and, and structures, we are now able to build these parts. Quality assurance in additive manufacturing is very important. Um, when looking at a part, a high performance part, the quality needs to be right and uh, it needs to be right the first time. So um, inspecting a part um, that has a complex structure is extremely time consuming. So with additive manufacturing, building up the material layer by layer, we do have the chance to do quality inspection during the build, during the build of the part. That's one aspect. And the other aspect is, of course, that we can do it after the build job, the quality inspection. So we typically are using tools like computer tomography uh, in order to uh, inspect the part uh, visually by um, using x-rays and uh, looking at defects, porosity for example, or cracks in the part and make sure that the part is defect free. Another aspect of quality assurance is to use the digital processing chain that starts with the design of the part, uh, moves further to the materials, the initial materials, which are powder, bay, powder materials um, that we start with, and then include the additive manufacturing process as well as the post-processing processing, uh, procedures. Uh, since we have a fully digital processing chain, we can also do the quality control and the quality management, uh, more or less, in a digital way. And this, by the way, is um, the vision uh, in additive manufacturing, not only to do the quality control, the quality management in a digital way, but also to have the evaluation process and the validation process in a fully digital way. So, if you will, the Aerospike could function as a role model, as a blueprint for a high quality part and a, um, a complex validation and, and quality management chain. Digital approval is certainly a dream. Um, so engineers have ever dreamt of uh, being able to not only test a part after a very complex uh, pro testing procedure, but uh, to have a digital approval. 
Uh, this will be a fairly long journey to, to get there, to, to reach this goal, uh, because of course, reliability of um, the, the simulation tools that we are using is certainly very important, uh, an important aspect. And then finally, you want to make sure that your models, your simulation is definitely right. So um, in the end, we will certainly end up with at least a limited number, but still a number of test pieces before we will um, um, take the part to uh, the real world and to application. Now the aerospike is a highly complex part. Um, internal cooling channels, uh, filigree structures, along with um, uh, great volumes, great material volumes, so it's very challenging to, to manufacture. And um, this manufacturability of parts is, is really key for many other um, uh, branches and, and industries, uh, such as energy industry, for example, where we have a complex turbine um, uh, components such as airfoils or uh, liner structures in other areas like automotive uh, industry where um, maybe decorative parts uh, should have uh, filigree structures and sophisticated structures are of major interest or in medical technology where also uh, sophisticated parts uh, and structures are, are key which are highly individualized. Um, so the aerospike is a perfect demonstrator, a technology demonstrator, so to speak, and can be adjusted and adopted by other industries as well. Well, the added value that Fraunhofer IWS can place to the additive community, and uh, the additive community is basically a, a worldwide community, is really that we are not only processing experts or materials experts, but we are processing and materials experts. And uh, we are understanding the, the whole processing chain, starting from the design, um, going through all the way through to the final, final part, including parts inspection. And they, that makes us unique in, in a sense that we have a very close understanding and very deep understanding of the interrelationship between the process, the processing parameters and their influence on the material and the material's microstructure. And finally, the microstructure determines the part's performance. And putting all these things together um, gives the whole picture. And that makes us unique in a sense that we bring all these, um, these expertise together um, to one focus. The Aerospike project is using um, a more or less standard material and with a standard material and a standard process we are making a high performance part. So uh, in the future I'm expecting the Aerospike project being a blueprint for um, similar project projects like this where we have an in-depth knowledge on the material as well as the process. So for all um, application areas where high performance, good quality, high reliability of the process along with high productivity of the process which finally also determines the economy of the additive manufacturing um, a process itself um, is um, are those areas where the aerospike can give a best practice example. Additive manufacturing is certainly on the edge to industrialization these days. Uh, Fraunhofer IWS is uh, a strong player in this game in, in a way that we help industry to understand the processing and the material um, in a holistic view that we can, uh, can take. So the major hurdles we see uh, regarding the implementation of this advanced 
manufacturing technology is certainly that the manufacturers do not fully understand what is going on with the process and, and the material. And we as experts are able to help them with this understanding. Another aspect that is important in order to bring additive manufacturing to an industrial processing chain is still the cost. The cost for the production of a part is still fairly high and this goes along with a fairly low productivity of the process. So additive manufacturing will find its way into industrial application in all these areas where highly complex, high performance parts are key, which cannot be made by conventional processes or which cannot be made in an economic way by conventional processes. So it's extremely important for companies to enter, when they plan to enter the field of additive manufacturing, to look at the business case first, to identify those parts which are parts that can be easily manufactured by additive and cannot be manufactured by conventional manufacturing methods. Customers working with IWS as additive manufacturing uh, experts can expect a full service, if you will. Um, so we consult our customers, first of all, with finding the, f the right part for their application. Um, the right design of the part. Um, for example, we have uh, projects from the past where we were involved in, in topology optimization, so to, to get the part optimized in an optimized structure. And, and then, of course, we, um, we work together with companies on the, the process itself to establish a robust process for an industrial uh, procedure. And uh, we do, of course, also the materials testing. So we follow along the processing chain, and in each step, the customer can enter the scene, and we can help our customers with whatever problem they, they might have with the technology. Jetzt haben wir so viel Spannendes von Ihnen beiden gehört. Wir haben aber noch abschließende Fragen, die von unserem Publikum auch hier reingespielt worden sind. Deshalb die erste Frage geht an Frau Gruber. Welches Potenzial hat die additive Fertigung für zukünftige Raumfahrtanwendungen? Da haben wir auch Spannendes drüber gesehen. Ja, genau. Ähm, ja, in der Raumfahrt ist es so, dass äh, die Teile natürlich konventionell ähm, oder allgemein von der Stückzahl her sehr ähm, reduziert sind. Das heißt, es werden manchmal nur, nur wenige Teile gebraucht. Ähm, und gerade für solche ähm, ja, Kleinserien- bzw. Einzelteilanfertigungen, dafür ist die additive Fertigung eigentlich prädestiniert, ähm, weil wir hier die Möglichkeit haben, die Geometrie ähm, auf die Anwendung anzupassen. Ähm, wir haben die Möglichkeit, den Funktionen zu integrieren ähm, und diesen Aufwand des Redesigns hineinzustecken, um dann wirklich dieses eine Bauteil oder diese kleine Serie zu, zu bauen. Dafür ist die additive Fertigung prädestiniert. Die konventionelle Fertigung irgendwann verdrängen oder wird das immer parallel existieren? Die konventionelle Fertigung werden wir trotzdem immer brauchen. Es ist eher ein Ergänzen. Also wir haben jetzt einfach mit der additiven Fertigung ein weiteres ähm, Werkzeug zur Hand, kann man so sagen, eine weitere Technologie. Und ähm, trotzdem brauchen wir für bestimmte Schnittstellen, ähm, die ganz enge Toleranzen haben und andere, ähm, ja, andere nachfolgenden Prozesse trotzdem noch die konventionelle Fertigung. Also ein Verdrängen wird es nicht sein, eher ein Ergänzen und damit das... Ähm, ja, neue Anwendungen, die, die damit erreicht werden können. Herr Stabin, Sie nicken so, also unterschreiben Sie das? Ah, er hört uns vielleicht jetzt. Äh, ja, ja, wir hören Sie auch ganz leise. Also ich äh, kann das auch nur unterstützen. Im Grunde ist es genau so. 
Ähm, ein Urformverfahren ersetzt halt auch nicht das andere. Und ähm, zum Beispiel bei recht geometrisch anspruchslosen ähm, ja, Teilen, wie zum Beispiel Rohren oder so, wird es sich nie halt durchsetzen, dass man sowas über additive Fertigung halt ähm, fertigen wird. Von daher ähm, ist es so, ist es sehr viel, ähm, sehr viel Gutes kommen mit der additiven Fertigung, aber es ist sicherlich auch jetzt nicht so der, ähm, der Halsbringer für, für alle Fragen und Anwendungen. Und das ist halt wie mit jedem spezialisierten, mit jeder spezialisierten Technologie, dafür muss man entsprechend die ja, darauf passenden Anwendungen finden. Danke Ihnen beiden. Klingt ja auch, viele finden das wahrscheinlich auch erstmal beruhigend, ne, wenn sich nicht mal alles irgendwie direkt auf den Kopf stellt. Andererseits waren das natürlich auch spektakuläre Bilder, die wir gesehen haben, wo die Reise dann irgendwann noch weiterhin gehen wird. Dankeschön, Ihnen beiden. Danke auch.